Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of RV That Bus. We are in the bus today and doing a couple uh, modifications. So, as we've used the bus, we've come to learn a couple things and this is one of them. So when we were building the bus, uh, all of our little trim pieces and accessories, uh, we kind of have a white and black theme going on here. As you can see, everything's white and black, all of our handles are all black, right? Uh, except for this guy. So when we originally purchased the shower, uh, I had just picked this up. Um, our Home Depot doesn't have solid satin black fixtures. They have the uh, brushed bronze, which is like a black, but then they kind of like sand the edges to like give it a weathered look or like a worn look. Um, and I didn't want that. And they were actually much more expensive than chrome because chrome is just plastic, but the bronze is actually bronze. Um, so yeah, we're gonna swap this out with this guy. So this is all black, yay, great. And uh, yeah, then here we've got the trim piece that goes on the top. So that's the trim piece, and then there's the handle. Yada, 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 all the normal stuff. Uh, the other thing is, is we also have to swap out the valve. And the reason that we have to do this is because ours is just a simple, it's off when it's like here. And then as you turn it, it turns on the water. Uh, this one changes the temperature when you turn it, but then you actually pull on it and this moves. And that's what actually turns the water on and off. So the valve is different and the handle's different. Um, the other reason why we're gonna be changing the valve is in when we originally plumbed all this up, um, we have a hot and a cold water supply going into it. Um, it's kinda, kinda hard to see, but we do have, um, you can see the blue and the red. Right, so we do have a hot and a cold. The problem is, is in our setup, we have the Furion tankless water heater. And when the water exits the water heater, it is already at the desired temperature. It's not like a traditional home heater where the water is, let's say 200 degrees, and then you apply cold water to bring it back down to the temperature of what you want. And what this creates for us is we're having to turn on the shower but then back it off a little bit to cut the cold water supply and just have hot and unfortunately that's creating a low flow situation which is great for maybe boondocking and not using as much water um, but unfortunately our water heater is freaks out sometimes because there's not enough flow through the water heater itself and the flow sensor uh, freaks out, which in turn turns off the gas because they don't want it doesn't want to overheat. Um, so when we take out the valve, I'm also going to be removing that cold line in here, pulling it all back through. Unfortunately, it goes this way and turns that way and goes underneath all of our cabinets. Um, so I'll be removing our cold water supply. We'll just be using the hot, and that should alleviate all of our problems. So that's what's on the agenda today. We also have some other things where we have these pockets for our windows. And from the outside, you can kind of see this lip of wood from the outside window. And so what we're actually going to be doing is applying carpet to that. And that way it looks nice and neat. And we'll also do uh, something with these too. And that way um, everything is nice and trimmed and looks, looks nice. So I'll be doing that and cleaning this up today. Hopefully this is going away. This is all of our wiring for our lights and light switches and all of that. Um, it's kind of been put off the back burner because I was going to switch it. Um, for now, I'm just going to uh, cut all these butt connectors off and replace that with a plug so that when I do eventually switch it, uh, it's nothing more than just unplugging it and plugging the new one in. Um, 
The other thing is, in our back bedroom, we have these guys here, and we need to carpet. You can see uh, we have some insulation. We've got the original duct from the engine. Uh, I'm gonna carpet inside of here so that nothing could possibly fall in behind there and it gives it a nice uh, trimmed out surface. Um, I'm also noticing that these little guys here are just not strong enough to hold that up. So I'm gonna add one more and that should, that should raise this guy up and, and be a little stronger. A um, couple other trims that we need to do is up in here. I'll somehow figure out how to get the carpet stuck to that. That'll be interesting. And yeah, just, just little trim things. Other than that, uh, everything's been great. So I'll uh, set up my little camera mount here and do some time lapse. I know that a lot of this uh, that we do is not necessarily shown when we're doing it. And I know that that's kind of a complaint that people want to see it. So let's see if we can do some time lapse today. I think it's an elephant ear flange so basically this is attached to a stud so that it's nice and rigid and then we have this the reason I take this off is because I have to cut this pex to get it off of the original valve the original valve might have it in a different spot it might be longer might be shorter whatever and I gotta uncrimp this guy so this guy comes out So here's the old valve. So you can see the hot comes in on this side, the cold comes in on this side, and then this goes to the tub, this goes up to the shower. We've capped this side off because we don't have a tub output. And uh, yeah, so that's how that works. Uh, normally what would happen is this would go down to the tub, your tub spout would have a little stopper on it. When you pull up on the stopper, 
that's going to stop flow from here. Water is going to take the path of least resistance. So it'll go up here to your shower. That's how a shower head uh, valve works. Pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take off all these fittings and uh, with new tape and put it on the new one. One more thing that I was working on last night, some of you might notice is that our uh, Arduino board and the big wire harness that was going into our little utility area, uh, it's all now in here. I need to attach that to the wall. And the big thing is, is all of the signal wires are now going to a plug. I need to get a plug on this harness here. And then it's just a simple matter of zip tying it all up nice and neat. But the big thing is, is it's all in here and not out here, which means we can finally shut the door. And once this is closed up, we can cut a piece to finally seal this up. Now, hopefully we're not gonna be in here too much, but it does need to be something that's kind of accessible. So I'm not sure if I wanna put uh, like a hinge on it, or if I just wanna, you know, have a couple of screws that can be removed. But for the most part, hopefully we should never be in here. Uh, you can see my pecs that I ran yesterday. Um, I took a shower in the bus last night and nothing in here leaks. Uh, you can kind of see right here that we just have the hot side, the cold side's blocked off. And so we just have uh, hot running here and it seems to work pretty well. Last project of the day. These are our overhead bins and they're not carpeted inside. All nice and neat. We can finally put stuff in there without it getting sawdust all over it. Uh, I think I want to paint or maybe carpet the inside of this. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll just paint it. But for now, all nice and carpeted. And for those who might not have ever seen it, this is our closet. It too is carpeted. I gotta do little pieces on these little guys, but yep. Thanks for watching RV That Bus.